Hey friends, Josh here. L- listen to this. This week, I have partnered with my good friend Michael Dalkey to bring you a free training that's going to be amazing. Michael took his cleaning business from 60,000 in revenue to 5 million in only a few short years. We're calling our training this week the ultimate breakout session. A breakout session is where you can go deep on something and learn the exact things you need to win. Now, both Michael and I had a lot of requests after the huge convention to really dig in deeper on the things that both of us talk about as speakers at the convention. So you can watch this for free. All you have to do is go to automategrowsell.com forward slash breakout, or it's even easier if you do this, just send a text message breakout to 44222. So you you send the word breakout, no spaces, just one word to 44222. And I can meet you, provide huge value to you. You can listen to what Michael and I have to teach. It's going to be amazing. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, Josh here. I am literally watching the most incredible sunset right now. Uh, I'm supposed to be in Costa Rica, but I'm still in Michigan. Dirty little secret. My flight leaves uh, in a couple days, though, so I will be back down there. But my in-laws have this house on this lake, and it's amazing because there's only 13 houses on this entire lake, and it's a big lake. So when you look across the lake to the other side, there's no houses. There's just forests, just trees. It's like you're in Alaska or up in the Upper Peninsula or somewhere in Canada. It's amazing, and the sun is setting right over it. And I'm just fired up because this is the continuation of the five-day special series we're doing, where I'm talking about my speech at the huge convention and the different points I went through during my keynote titled The Executive Mindset. And I've already went through some incredible, powerful material. If you if you haven't listened to the other episodes and you're coming into this one, go back, push pause, just stop right now, go back. There's five in a row, they all build on each other, It's totally worth it to go back. And if not, it's totally cool. You're going to get a lot of value out of this. Today, we're picking up where I left off yesterday, which is point number seven, point number eight, and point number nine. So point number seven of having the executive mindset, which is required to build the business of your dreams. Now, look, my business was never perfect. I'm not trying to be cheesy here. I'm not trying to over-dramatize what having a cleaning business is, but some people under-dramatize what having a good business is. They, they don't understand how amazing it can be to have an automated business. They don't know what it's like to go on vacation for a month, come back, and they have more money than before they left. That is a real thing, my friends. It's real. It's available to you. You do not have to be a genius. I went to college for like six minutes. I mean, I always, <laughs> I always joke, yeah, yeah, I went to college. I stopped by. But that's it. You know, my degrees, I have a bachelor's in pain and a master's in suffering. I say it all the time. Look, you can do this, but you have to apply the right things and you have to have the right mindset. I think mindset is more important than anything. So let's get into it. Point number seven of having the executive mindset is that executives build teams. And look, I consider this a secret. This is a major profound insight. So I want you to write this down unless you're driving, of course, just make a mental note, burn it into your subconscious. Hear me, here it comes. Just because you have employees does not mean that you have a team. Boom. That is big stuff. Let that sink in. You might think you have a team. Most of you probably do not have a team. You have employees and you think because you have employees, you have a team. Well, they're not the same thing. This is big stuff. This is high level, okay? And look, even if you only have one part-time helper and he's your cousin, that is still an opportunity for you to have a team. And part of having the executive mindset is to understand that your role in your business is not to be the quarterback. You don't get all the glory. You don't get to throw the touchdown passes. You are the coach. You put the other people in the position to win. You coach them through the victories. This is like a major deal. People don't see it this way. I'm a football fan. I've always loved football. I started playing football in fifth grade all the way through my senior year, right? And look, professional football coaches, they have a cool job. And what I like about it is that it directly and totally parallels the life of a small business owner. 
there's so many similarities. It's it's almost uncanny. You see, professional football coaches, really college football, any, any football coach, they recruit people. They have to inspire people. They have to drive and set the company culture, the team culture. They have to hold people accountable when they're flaking out and screwing up. They have to have the tough conversations. They're there to encourage. They're there to strategize. That is your job. I just described your job as a small business owner. So I want you to imagine in your brain right now, go with me on a little mental journey. I want you to imagine a football coach. He is at football practice and he is a white haired little old man with bottle cap glasses. He's five foot four and he's got a clipboard and his little windbreaker jacket on. He's on the sideline and he's watching his team practice and he is getting super ticked off, right? They're running a play. It's a simple play. And every time they run it, the running back is dropping the ball. He cannot hold on to the stupid ball. And, and the coach, he's a, he's, a, he's a patient guy. You know, this isn't his first rodeo, but he's starting to grip his clipboard a little tighter each time. He's getting mad. He's like, run it again. Run it again. And it's not working. Finally, he reaches a breaking point, and he just slams his clipboard in the ground, and he runs onto the middle of the field so fast that his glasses fall off his head, and he pushes the running back on the ground and says, get out of the way, you idiot, you stupid dummy. I'm going to be the running back. And he grabs the ball and puts on a helmet, puts on his shoulder pads, right? I mean, <laughs> it's a funny picture. It's a metaphor, okay? It's not literal. But you see, as ridiculous as this scenario sounds... Because if a coach did that, he's definitely not on the right track. He can't be the running back. He needs to coach his running back through the process of this is how you hold the ball. You got to hit the hole at this angle. Something's broken in the way we're doing this. Let's figure it out together, right? But we do these same things in our business constantly, constantly. But we don't recognize how silly it is and how we're screwing ourselves over by doing it. Uh, when I was at the convention, I told the story. For me, when I was in high school, I was actually the quarterback of my football team. So for me, uh, I actually was part of a record-setting year. And one of the records I helped set was my junior year during our homecoming. We played this game, and we lost the game 69-0. to <laughs> 69 to 0 at our own homecoming and I'm the quarterback on that team, right? So like in our case, I wish my my coach would have like suited up and helped us. Like that would have been awesome. We really could have used the help. But look, I'm kidding. Okay? But we're going to have challenges with the people in our business. We're going to have challenges with the people around us, no doubt about it. But we got to have the correct mindset. And we are there to coach and to lead and to inspire them, to invest in them. We're there to give, 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 and then ask something on the back end, right? Real executives, they don't take the ball out of the hands of their players. What, what we do is we assemble the right team. We develop those players over the long term. That's the difference. I remember the very first time that I left a job site with, with one of my crews. So when I say one of my crews, it was my only crew, right? There was two people plus me. And I had only had two people for a few weeks, right? So we go to this job and I'm like super nervous. I'm like, you guys got it. You, you don't forget to this and make sure you don't, and with, don't forget this other pro. And they're like, Josh, we got it. Like you trained us. Like we get, get out of here. We're good, man. We got this. Trust us. And I'm, I'm like kind of back stepping to my car, like in slow motion, like, okay, you sure? And they're like, get out of here, Josh. I get in my car, I start driving down the road and I have a perma smile on my face. You know, this is the first time I just was driving, but they were back there doing a job, making money. It was amazing. And if you have employees, you got to remember the first time where you stepped away, but your business still worked. Like it's so cool. And it was so small and so humble. So I drove to the logical place for someone who, uh, you know, has a business that's starting to work. I went to the Chinese buffet with my mom <laughs> and I, I'm eating sweet and sour chicken dinner and rice and probably ice cream, you know, cause they have ice cream at Chinese buffets, even though it's like noon, you just like get this giant bowl of ice cream with like caramel on it. Yeah. I, I definitely probably did that anyway. So I'm sitting there eating and I'm, I'm like having this, this tripped out moment in my brain. Like I'm eating chicken, but I'm making money. I'm making money, but I'm eating chicken. Like, this is amazing, right? And the reason it was happening was because I had a team. My team was winning. You know, I had coached them at a basic level, and even at a basic level, it was working. And it was a huge blessing to me. You fast forward a few years, and every year in the middle of the summer, which was the busiest time of the year for us, 
my wife's family has this mega huge family reunion vacation thing on the other side of the state. And it's a week. And it's during our busy time. And there was many years when I was building my business, I couldn't go to it. So my wife would go, my kids would go. I had to stay back and work my butt off. Well, once my business was automated and systemized and I had my team and I started to figure these things out, I could go. And I would go over there, shut my phone off, not even talk to people from my company. I'd come back a week later and guess what? I had more money than when I left for the vacation. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. And like I said, you know, before a couple podcasts ago, you know, at the end of the day, this stuff is not easy to do, but it is, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. You got to remind yourself, look, it's worth it. Stay in the fire. Lean into the pain. You got this. It's not easy. Of course it's not easy. Okay, point number eight of having the executive mindset is that you have to become an investor. An investor. Now, when you think of an investor, you might think of this arrogant guy with a really fancy suit who says, oh, what do you do for a living these days? Well, you know, I'm an, I'm, I'm an angel investor. I just invest and stuff. And look, hopefully you, you reach that level of awesomeness where you can be really arrogant. No, I'm just kidding. Look, you are an investor right now. You just don't realize it. Most of you think that buying a Waterford pole or a new pressure cleaner or a new truck mount or a new lawn mowing thing that costs 12 grand. Look, you think that you're an investor when you buy that. Okay. And buying equipment is a form of investment, but it's a low level form of investment. What I'm talking about is a high level. What, you, what people do when they buy equipment is they make what's called a capital investment from an accounting standpoint. Okay. I'm not going to get all nerdy on you. I'm talking about investing in the things that matter more than everything else. Number one, you have to invest. I'm talking daily. I'm talking weekly. I'm talking monthly, year over year, never stopping until you are dead. You have to invest in these three things. Number one, your education. And look, I, I feel like I should slow clap for you right now because you're listening to this podcast. And that, that's an admirable thing. Like that matters. That's huge. People like you typically will win as long as you're applying the information. So education is number one. Number two is relationships. You know, executive mindset point number one was your business is about a lot more than money. Point number two was it's not about you. Look, if you make everything about you, you can't scale. People will get sick of you. They won't be able to work for you. They're not going to rally behind you and go to war for you. You have to invest in other people, not in a manipulative way, not in a fake way, like in a totally legit, authentic, expecting nothing in return kind of way. That is how you invest in relationships with your key employees, with your spouse, with your children. You have to be pouring in, making deposits in those things. It is major, mega important. The third thing, okay, number one was education. Number two is relationships. The third thing you have to invest in is yourself. You have to invest in yourself. Some of you guys invest in yourself too much. <laughs> you only invest in yourself. Everything's about you. So that, that's a problem. Hopefully you can understand that's not what I'm talking about. But a lot of you guys, a lot of small business America, you're actually really stinking hard on yourself. I mean, really, you, the bar you set is, is unattainable. You never feel like you've done enough. You never feel like you can step away. You never feel like you can take a break. You know, how dare you take a weekend off, right? I lived in that guilt, but the thing is, is that it's very, very low level thinking and you're going to sabotage yourself by doing that. You have to take care of your own brain, your own body, your own health, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual health. It's so, so important. You know, the way that you engage, you know, your employees and the people around you, it's an investment. It's a good investment. If you join, you know, a high impact business building course, like my Automate Grow Sell Bootcamp, it's a huge investment. I mean, the long-term value of something like that is almost immeasurable if you're applying the stuff. And, and equipment is good, okay? Equipment's cool. Having nice stuff is a huge deal. But, but having clarity on what to do next and what order to do it and how to do it and how to build these systems and how to inspire your team and how to get your employee issues to be minimized, having the knowledge to build the back end of your business is a thousand times, a thousand times more important than the equipment side. And most people run towards the equipment and they avoid the investment in their education and all that stuff. 
And look, you need to also invest in your key employees if you have them. You have to know the names of their kids and their spouse and what their deal is and what makes them tick and what are they trying to do? Why do they show up to work every day? That's your deal. That's you being an invest investor. And they produce a, an ROI, you know, a return on investment that is so ridiculous. You, can, you can't even imagine what this will do for you when this really clicks for you. But like I said, you got to invest in yourself. You have to create the space for yourself to think, the space for yourself to enjoy and to rest. And some of you say, well, Josh, you, you don't understand. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to do this. I can't go through your boot camp. I can't even watch TV. I just pass out every day. I can't read that business book I know I should be reading. Look, I hear you, okay? But what you're really saying is, Josh, I don't have time to eat. I don't have time for food. How dare you try to tell me to eat food? That's what you're saying. And you can get away with it for a while. And in business, you can get away with it for years. But your body, just like your business, if you do not feed it, will crack and break and fall completely apart. And then you probably be filled with negativity and say, oh, the economy got me. You know, oh, this employee screwed me. And really, if we could drill down to the core of it, it's usually you neglecting yourself, neglecting the key relationships in your life, and very importantly, neglecting your own education, being a coward when it comes to investing in information, the information that changes everything. You do got to take time to smell the roses, my friend. You got to take your wife on that vacation that you've been talking about for five years and you never follow through, but she, she better respect me. Doesn't she know how hard I work? Look, stop making excuses and start doing stuff. Start living this stuff because this is the way of a chief executive officer. And for all you owner operators, if you're still listening, because I'm talking about kind of some employee stuff and some high level stuff, and you're thinking, dude, this like, this does not apply to me. Yes, it does. Everything I just said completely applies to someone, even if you're working alone. Let's wrap it up here. Point number nine of having an executive mindset is to lead by example. And this is a cliche thing. People are like, oh, lead by example. Dur, dur, dur. Okay. But I don't think we do enough self-examination to really measure our current um, results in this area. We think we're doing awesome, but we're probably not. We're probably way too hard on everybody else and way too easy on ourselves. One of my favorite isms is that everyone will do exactly what you do, except a little bit less. And look, if you want your business to operate at a very high level, if you want your business to just be crushing it like a total fine-tuned machine, like boom, like you're level 10, you're just crushing it, like you're so much better at every part of the process than your competition and everybody's mad at you and freaked out because you guys are amazing. If you want that, then you have to start that process in the beginning, like five, six levels above that. Whatever you think you're going to end up at, you need to go above that when you start because everyone will do it, you do, but a little bit less. Another thing that's important to understand is that all of you listening to this, you are an influencer to somebody. I'm going to say that again. It's really important. You are an influencer to somebody. People watch you, Okay. People are waiting for you to lead. People look up to you. Somebody, even if they don't say it, even if they look like they have a chip on their shoulder, even if they're not super engaged and, and you do these impassioned team meetings and they sit there and stare at you like zombies, listen, you are totally getting through to these people. People are just really good at putting up walls. They're really good at playing it cool. But on the inside, you are affecting things. And all the people you work with are watching you so close. You can't even imagine the way you're negative if a customer acts crazy. The way that you, you know, secretly charge more than you had to because there's a miscommunication on price, even though you could do the right thing and, and do the original price. Look, people are watching you. And attaining perfection, like, that's impossible. I'm not telling you, hey, be perfect, because everybody will do that in a little bit less. No, I'm telling you to do all the little things really well. Like when someone does something totally idiotic and it costs your company $5,000 and they fall off a ladder because they're stupid or, or they smoke a cigarette on the job site and the customer thinks you're low level and all that. Look, do you keep a steady hand during one of those crises? Like how do you react? Do you react like a high level Fortune 500 exec executive would react? I hope you do. Do you show up to work early? Do you stay late? Are you doing the bare minimum? Because people are watching you. 
Do you do the right thing for your employees and your customers when no one's looking, like I just mentioned? People are watching you. Do you allow your sales guy or yourself to sell that $2,000 service to the little old lady who really doesn't understand or get it? She's totally manipulatable, right? Like, you, you, like she'll buy it, but she doesn't need it. Do you, sell, do you sell that? Do you make that sale? Your team is watching you. Shoot, your children are watching you. And the influence that all of us have, including me, including you, is so far beyond what you can ever imagine. I think, I think we don't really understand this because we all have our own self-limiting beliefs. We're like, well, who am I? I'm no big deal. Who would watch me? Trust me, tons of people watch you. You are amazing to somebody. You're a role model to somebody. So don't screw this up. Don't screw it up. Listen, guys, that's it. I hope you're getting uh, as pumped up about this as I am. This is all genuine. I'm excited to share these things. These are major, major things. But all of it's useless if you don't apply it, if you don't do it. And I know you're busy, but you got to make the space to invest in yourself. Look, this week I'm doing a webinar with Michael Dalkey. I've talked about this in the other podcast. You need to sign up. You need to register. And please share the link so that other people can register. It's free. We're going to do a deep dive into how to build your business really quickly in a way that's stable and have amazing company culture. You know, Dalkey's specialty is that. You know, he took a business from 60000 in revenue to $2 million in less than four years and then to $5 million a few years after that. That's not a normal thing, Okay. He doesn't have pride in himself. He doesn't think he's awesome. I have to drag him to do this because he knows lots of stuff. He's very sharp. He understands the cleaning business. He lives it every day. And me and him are going to teach you what we did to achieve you know, a high level of success in automation. So I hope to see you on there. We're also going to do a live demo of my boot camp, the Automate Grow Sell boot camp. People are changing everything in their business because of the boot camp. And the thing is, is it's not because I give them some secret special hot sauce to sprinkle on their business. It's because it's a framework. It's the exact framework on what do I do, Josh? How do I do it? How do I build this system? There's samples, there's teachings, there's accountability. There's a private mastermind Facebook group with all the boot campers that support each other. There's so much stuff in there. It's high value stuff. And the boot camp is new. It's less than a year old. People are excited about it. Right? We only open it up in small batches. The price of it is going to go way, way up very soon. And so you'll get an opportunity to at least see what it is you know, during our training as well. So I encourage you to join on there. Give me a review on iTunes if you have time. I know I'm asking a lot here, uh, but this is, this is valuable information. So if you feel inspired by it, hop on over to iTunes. Help me out. Help a brother out. Until next time, take care. God bless. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.